Hello everyone, I'm Brian. Today I'm reacting to the one problem behind all our problems, uh, Prashant. Um, my prediction for this, and mind you, I, back before I started watching these videos, I thought there's many problems. Many, many problems. And as I continue to watch Swami Gurus talk about different things, I think there is one problem now. <laughs> I, and honestly, I didn't think about how many problems there were until I I read this. It's like the one problem behind all our problems, and I think I refined it to one problem, and I think that problem lies with identities. And now I'm not going to go as far as what Sadhguru says that we should. I, I think he'd say this. He did say this, but I just don't know if this is all he means. But we should just identify as humans. If we can just have that one identity, that'd be great. There'd be no differences. Again, I, I do talk about this in terms of also uh, homogenous countries versus diverse countries. Um, but um, if you only have one identity, we cannot differentiate ourselves. We don't have differences. But because of all the different identities, we continue to create very uh, a lot of problems for us. But I want to kind of go in the middle here. Uh, and my saying for this would be um, the problem that we have is identities, but not necessarily identities inherently as a problem. I look at identities as a tool, so I want I would hope that we use our identities as ways of helping people and not attacking people. So what I mean by that is that if we say, "Oh, hey, you're a." Uh, you're Canadian. That's really cool. I find it very interesting. Let me learn about you. Let me learn about your culture, your ways, your speech, your whatever. Instead of saying, oh, you're Canadian. Hmm. You suck. There's <laughs> just something like that, you know. Instead of using identities as a way of separating each other, as a way to grow closer together, a way to learn from one another. Oh, you love um, fishing. I've never went fishing. Let me try it out. Let's let me try to experience. Can you help me out with that? Or it's like, oh, you like fishing? Fishing sucks. I like playing football or some or soccer, football. You know, again, just that differences alone. You use it as a weapon instead of as a way to say, oh, that's really cool. Uh, good luck. Have fun. Uh, have fun. I'm, I'm gonna go play soccer or football. You know, instead of instead of just saying just enjoying ourselves, we use it as a way to attack each other. Oh, you you have red hair, you have black hair, you're from another country, you have you're six feet tall, you're four feet tall, you have one leg, two arms, <laughs> ten twenty four fingers, you know, we're using all these things as ways to hate each other instead of as a curiosity or as a just a curiosity at the very least. Again, nothing hateful, nothing combi combative, just something interesting. Oh, you have 11 fingers. That's weird. <laughs> I'm curious what the heck happened. And and just see that it's just something unique. But instead, we use that as something to hate each other for. And I will say America is doing quite a fantastic job at creating so many identities and using it as a way of hating each other. Okay, anyway, let's get started. <laughs> so I don't know what At the one... At the root of the climate catastrophe lies man's tendency to consume. Hmm. CC? No CC. And man consumes in three clear ways and three distinct ways. Man wants to consume the entire world. And the entire world consists of human beings, prakritic beings, which you call as natural beings, and man-made things. Whenever you will look around you, these are the three kinds of things you will find, right? Other human beings, other natural beings, oh, okay. and other man-made things. Man consumes all three, and consumption of all three leads to carbon emissions. When you consume another human being, what do you get? What do you get? Kids. And that is the biggest cause of carbon emissions. When you consume man-made things, again, what do you emit? Carbon. Because whatever there is man-made is made using energy and energy comes from fossil fuels. So whenever you are consuming something man-made, you are causing carbon emissions. 
And the third thing is consumption of natural resources. Whether you are eating vegetables, whether you are a vegan or not, or whether you are consuming meat, all of this is highly carbon emitting. Even if you are vegan, you will eat grains at least. Where will the grains come from? Where will the grains come from? They can only come by felling forests. But then you start feeling great. I am a vegan, you know. I am holier than thou. <laughs> the earth does not have resources to support 8 billion or 11 billion vegans. <laughs> I'm sorry. The, the, the way he did the vegan thing is, is pretty true for some vegans. It's usually the loud ones. But uh, again, that's another form of identity. Vegans. There are vegans out there who are so far up their own butts. They think they're holier, holier than thou. Very much so. Again, not all of them. A lot of them wants to be as carbon neutral as possible. I do wonder what he would think if um, the stuff that's producing all this is solar, re renewable energy, say um, um, wind turbines, uh, what do you call those, water turbines, solar panels, I don't know what else it could be. <laughs> uh, but yeah, those three things. If those if foods are being produced through renewable energies, through things that are just already happening naturally, that we don't even have any uh, oh dams too, like the the water dams, that you know we don't we just catch basically the energy. I wonder what he would think about that one. Curious, because uh, I don't know how old this video is, but obviously we're trying to swap over to that. But it's right now the technology I don't think is good enough yet. So do not be so happy about just being a vegan. Veganism doesn't help the cause of climate change beyond a point. We need two things. One, less people and less consumption. And both of them. Both of them together. Are you getting it? Even if one of them is missing, you are gone. US has not too many people. Just 32 crores are there. And yet they are the biggest carbon emitters in the world. Are we? I know we're the biggest consumers in the world. I thought China might be the biggest carbon in the world. Just because there's a, there is a lot of regulations in terms of reducing emission. I, I don't think we're the biggest in, the, in terms of carbon emission. I think China is. I, but then again, I don't know. It's been a little bit. I think China is because I don't think there's regulations, too much regulations, and I think they're trying to become an economic superpower, and they're doing that by any means necessary. Maybe again, I could be wrong. I haven't really looked that up, but I did. Well, I did at one point, but I just it was only one source, and I'm not too sure. Because they consume. On the oh, other okay. end is China. Okay, okay, because of the consumption. Okay, I get it. Yes, yes, we are the biggest consumer. That is probably without a doubt. I don't even have to look that up to know that. I could be wrong, but I doubt it. China, the per capita consumption is 1 by 5 or 1 by 10 of the USA. And yet they are number 2 on the carbon list. Why? Because they are just too many. You need a situation where there are not more than 2 or 3 billion people in the world. That has been scientifically calculated to be the sustainable limit. Really? I I did look up, um, or I did watch a video, let me just put it that way. The, the, I think they did a calculation of how many people Earth can sustain. I thought it was like 11 billion. But that is with a lot of, um, how do I say, a lot of GMO type stuff, you know, where you... you, you start creating plants that can produce a lot more than they normally capable of but then again I don't remember if that accounts for soil and stuff and degradation of the soil because of what farmers tend to do to try to get a lot of nutrients out of the soil and that's something that Saguru was also pushing where you know they're, they're constantly pushing up the topsoil and it's destroying the topsoil um, which again I noticed that's been an issue in the United States I don't know where that's went because I stopped kind of watching those videos <laughs> but Saiguru did bring that up with Save the Soil movement earlier today uh, earlier this year and pretty much now I think it ended 
and currently we are 8 billion we need to reduce it to 2 or 3 billion that's the first thing secondly these 2 or 3 billion people have to be spiritual so that they do not have a tendency to consume unless you are spiritual you are bound to be living a consumption centric life the very urge for liberation when it doesn't find an outlet it becomes the urge to consume do you see this where does the tendency to consume so much come from it comes from the Ego. misidentified oh yeah <laughs> and thwarted urge towards liberation if you will not provide liberation to a man his energies will flow in the direction of consumption so these are the two things that we require one less population secondly the population that remains must be highly spiritual in its outlook only then can you avoid the climate catastrophe all this tamasha that is happening on the streets will not help instead it is making people feel good about themselves i look at these warriors climate warriors young men and young women some of them were fighting the police recently in bombay huh. and i thought to myself will these young people refuse to have a kid no that they won't here for a tree they are prepared to lay down their lives and i respect that sentiment seriously i respect that but then i want to question the efficacy of that you don't want these 2700 trees to be cut down but then if you get one child that is the equivalent of cutting down a lakh trees i i i'll push back a little bit on that one if everyone every family only ever has one child we will reduce in population would it be half though because two parents in order when two when two parents die you need two kids to take their place but when two parents die and only they only have one kid they only replace half of their numbers two replaces their numbers so if every parent has two kids the numbers i do believe with the numbers will stay the same would be if there's 7 billion people and every kid has every kid has two kids they will only ever replace their parents before them if every family only ever has one kid we will reduce i don't know what the rate would be would i don't think it would be half it would be like maybe a third over generations but again having one kid is a reduction having two kids is not an increase but when you have three kids you replace the mother the father and then you have a spare <laughs> it's weird to say that that way but one kid two kids and this is the kind of um i guess kind of the fear that uh kind of have for the US is the fact that kind of like what China was doing where they had the one child policy i don't want that to happen so i hope people take responsibility and i hope that's what he's pushing for is is to be responsible that's all one bringing one child to the world is the equivalent of cutting down a lakh trees maybe more just do the maths hmm but you show so much of sentiment when a tree is hacked down and you show no sentiment when you see family after family procreating you in fact send them congrat congratulatory messages wow nice didi good that you have you had your second or third kid now um real quick um and here's the thing too is the fact that we don't know what combination of people will create the geniuses that will save the world or make the world worse both are very much possibilities i do believe uh i don't know it, it's again i would never ever force anyone to have kids nor to not have kids I would just say be responsible maybe one I think would be great honestly just one and by doing one alone you will reduce the world population I don't know what the number is though <laughs> I mean again two parents only have one child when both parents die the one child's left from both those parents so that looks like half but it's not because I think two two parents or grandparents one children one child and then that child will have one child uh, as well but then again that the other child the w husband or wife will be from another parent but yeah it's it's a bit confusing but yes by only having one child you will reduce the population by having two children you do not increase nor decrease the population um but yeah 
Returning from the climate demonstration, what does this young girl do? She calls up her Didi and says, So Didi, was the delivery fine? What nonsense is this? Do you understand? Climate catastrophe is a spiritual problem. Uh, uh, sorry, I want to get back to what I was saying a little bit about. We don't know. Children has a possibility be to be a world saver or a destroyer, or nothing at all, or somewhere in between. There could literally be a combination of maybe his child, his second child, if he has two childs, will be the one that creates things that will clean up the air, clean up the pollution, um, find renewable energy so we can get rid of fossil fuels and coal. And uh, and use solar power or tur wind turbines or tidal turbines. I, I can't. I don't know what the water one's called. And you know we don't know. I mean, that's not an excuse to have a second kid. But you know, <laughs> it it's genuinely true. We don't know. But and it can only have a spiritual solution. All else that you see happening around you in the name of climate activism. It's just tamasha. It will not help. Ha! Huh, it will boost up a lot of egos. It will give fame and limelight to a lot of young people. I'm sorry I'm pausing so much, but he makes really good points, and I just want to also add a little bit of what I've obtained from my own personal experience. And what he's saying here about personal gratification, is, in a sense, is what I'm seeing a lot in America, where you have a lot of these kids, young adults, who are generally in a well-off, uh, well-off in terms of money and finances, who grew up in upper middle class, who are pushing for a lot of social change, and and basically they're just out there screaming and yelling and not really doing anything at all. Like what he's saying, they're just they're like, oh, I've done my part in progression and and climate change and social equality social justice and they don't really do anything for the, not all of them obviously but it seems like the majority of those who go out and do this stuff just say it just to feel good like he's saying which i see that it's kind of, that's why i was kind of laughing too when i heard he said that but uh, the sad truth of the matter is that whenever a lot of changes are pushed it's going to be the poor that suffers they will become climate warriors, they will become saviors of the world. Tomorrow one of them might even get the Nobel Prize. My kids in the future hmm? maybe. So much of limelight is there, you know. This young man, he has really brought this issue to popular consciousness. Let's bestow upon him the Nobel Prize for peace. All that can happen. But all that will be just symbolic. Hmm, true. Not helpful at all. Or even if it helps, it will help only to a very marginal degree. Well, marginal could be a lot. We, we, we generally do not know. I mean, a, a lot of things are being discovered. If, if people continue to push towards the STEM fields, eventually we will find ways to beat climate change if we haven't gotten to the point of no return, which I think uh, which is a lot of people are fearing of, of course. Do you get the real solution? From 8 billion, take it back to 2 billion. That's and you don't have lot. to kill people for that. You just have to edu huh? and you don't have to kill people for that. You just Ooh. have to educate and encourage people to not to reproduce. Even if they want to have kids let them have at max one kid yeah whoa <laughs> well i mean you know that's a scary thing that's again that, that is what um china did in force i don't know what happens if you have twins or if you accidentally get pregnant again are they gonna force you to have you know and second thing is this two or three billion that finally remains must be deeply spiritual from the heart so that it does not have a tendency to feast upon the world are you getting it huh but the way climate activism is going it is going in a very 
blind direction. People are trying to get governments to intervene by way of legislation. What can the governments do? It's a democratic world. The governments will only do what the people want them to do. And the people want only cosmetic steps to be taken. So the governments will take cosmetic steps. In fact, chances are, you know, as far as this tree plantation exercise is concerned, chances are we have already crossed the threshold where tree plantation can reverse the changes of the, the effects of climate change. That threshold has already been crossed. Now we need stricter action. Now we need more meaningful action. Now we need real action. Planting trees might have been a useful step 20 years back, but that threshold has been long since crossed. You need to do more concrete action today. And more <coughs> concrete action is not about, you know, Friday demonstrations and all that stuff and Friday strikes. All that is just a show. Hmm? Real action needs to be taken. Well, I mean, I'm not disagreeing with them, absolutely. I mean, I hope that people can, um, let's get out of this bright screen. I hope that we can uh, get encourage people to have at one or two children, two at absolute most. And what do you do if they have triplets by accident? I don't think forcing them to one is the brightest of I or a good idea i mean if that happens <laughs> i mean it's, i don't i think it'd be wrong to force them to do something about that it's, except just to say well when that happens it happens we have to let that go by <laughs> Oof. but at least you're not forcing anyone necessarily to do something i don't know it's true, again, Saguru is also pushing this about, you know, we need to limit the population. And he made a, a very, very, um, how do I say, stunning quote, uh, uh, stunning fact, I, I suppose, where he said the population of teenagers in India was equivalent to the population of the United States. I'm like, whoa. Oh my god, teenagers alone, holy smokes. Or is it children or teenagers? I don't remember. I'm like, okay, that is quite a bit. That is quite a lot. That is quite a lot. But yeah, I would have figured the one problem is uh, is um, ego, identities. But he was talking more along the lines of, uh, I guess, getting to the point of no return. Once we damage the earth so much that it cannot be recovered, then it's just a downhill uh, eventually, yeah, if, if we do start running out of resources, eventually we're going to start warring against each other for resources. That's I think that's been done in movies, and a lot of people will say that, like, hey, look, if we don't do something about it now, we're going to end up start warring each other for resources, because that's the only way to ensure our survival. If we don't have resources, food, water, then uh, whoever doesn't have those is going to die. Whoever doesn't have those is going to fight to have those. Anyways, that's my reaction to the one problem behind all our problems. If you like my content, please consider subscribing. Thumbs up, thumbs down, down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vid.